when uh, Carmen Ben sent me to, from Tonga to New Zealand. I stayed at the YMCA in Christchurch. And uh, <clears throat> during a meal time after church, and someone asked me a question. Are you a Christian? While we had the meal, then I said, yes. And someone else asked me the sec second question. How do you know? Then bit by bit there I realized I wasn't a Christian on the light of the scriptures we been through. I knew a lot about God, but I realized I didn't know Him personally. Some, some guys, they helped me how to share the gospel, and He told me, see carefully how I do it. Because one day you're going to do it. That was great. I am very thankful that God bring Caleb around. And then we ended up making arrangements to meet the following morning and pray and read from the Bible and share. From then on, we, we've been meeting on a weekly basis, talking away and sharing from the, from the Bible and praying. Sharing the gospel to people uh, it was a delight because God had already modeled that through the guys in the nerves. Hmm? And then he says to me, now you see me doing it, you go do it. Yeah? So the next time we went, I had the courage to share the gospel with that person. And then I came back to him with that guy, he said, uh, Caleb, I'd like you to help this man. See, I led him to the Lord, and I want you to help him like, just like how you helped me. And Caleb said to him, no, you do it. <laughs> you do it. And I said, how? And then he said to me, come on in. So he took me into his office, he grabbed his Bible, he opened the Bible and he showed me to Timothy 2.2. 2. From what you have heard from me before many witnesses, eh, entrusted to faithful men who would be able to teach others also. So what you have seen me do to you, you do it to him. I did not uh, um, care about how he does it. What made me, what prompted me, is the obedience to do it. Yeah? And you're not sharing me on the net, you're sharing Christ. Then I really believe then that God is using me. And I want to surrender to Him to use me just to do that simple thing. What I know has been done to me, just do it to Him. I don't have to do anything new. Before we married with Palasi, I told him that it's my life uh, like uh, making disciples and sharing Christ with others and, and it's and the same with my husband too and we are the same. I want God to use me to raise up generations of laborers who would love to live and work among the lost. We, we work together to, to, to encourage them and we have Bible study so <clears throat> Palacio is working with the the, um, the men, so I work with the, with the uh, women. God allowed uh, Caleb and Balassi to meet me. They're having a Bible study in our village, and I and my wife join, and that's the first time. We're happy to invite me to the uh, Bible study group in the, during the, the next week. Yes. So I went to the Bible study, and uh, Balassi help me and follow me up and from then teach me the basics. The scripture itself has power and it's living. So the only thing that I have is to pass it, is to, is to pass it on to the next generation. Isaiah is one of the guys that we are meeting these days that was doing Bible studies and also he is leading the navigator work in the Eastern District. He is, if I am to put it, my Timothy. <laughs> I really thank the Lord for leading me to meet those people and taking you all in, the, in this ministry of the Navigator is, for me, it's quite a blessing. I cannot explain how helpful 
plus is life to myself. Not only in conducting the Bible study, in discipling, but observing the truth of, of God's word in his life. And he had several guys under him having different times and different places with, uh, for Bible studies with these guys. And um, he's so into disciple making mm. on a one-to-one -one basis. And I know that, that God uh, called me to be one of his uh, laborers in making disciples. Tonga is the smallest island in the map. It's a, it's a dot. It's a period. And we are the only Pacific island that we still have our, our king. I think Tonga, they know a lot about God. But it's a pity not many know him. One thing is coming to me because we, we always say the word Tonga is a Christian country, but it's not a Christian country, it's a religion country. And the people nowadays thrown away into traditions, but not the, the, the truth of the gospel that uh, Jesus wants us to follow. Our um, extended family is still strong. Some, um, we, we still call it like this. The first cousin, we still call it brother or sister. It's not a cousin. And that's how close the family is. Uh, some of the Tongan family still live together with extended family. Grands, uh, grandmother and grandpa are still living together with son and all the grandchildren. How close the family is. And when we come to the move with the Lord in the gospel, it's going through the families, it is still strong. When we list down the family to pray and to move the gospel to the family, there will be heaps of rain. I would like people from all over the world to pray for Tonga, that Tonga would be a place where God is glorified through multiplying disciples. It's a blessing for me. It's an honor for me to, to witness and to share Christ with the Tongan people, and that's my life, you know. We are asking God to raise up disciples, uh, trustworthy um, laborers in all the other Pacific Islands. God is blessing Tonga, but the need we need to keep sharpening. We are emphasizing these days with the Tongan navigators. The calling, that's our calling. And we claim that as our calling from God and to advance the gospel of Jesus and his kingdom into the nations through spiritual generations of laborers living and discipling among the lost. So we claim that as our own from God.